I'm Jay Hiscox, Associate Director with Project Services. And um, to begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're presenting a project located on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Um, I'm pleased to introduce the proposal for renewal of the Great Hall at Museum of Anthropology. Museum of Anthropology, EBC, is Canada's largest teaching museum and it's both a top tier academic teaching and research institution and a top Canadian provincial tourist destination. Um, built in 1975, designed by Arthur Erickson, the building is considered a masterpiece of Canadian architecture. In 2014, UBC commissioned a report to assess mitigation strategies for leaking MOA building envelope components, and in particular, the Great Hall skylights and overall building roofing. MOA has also been identified as a very high risk seismically and a high priority in UBC's seismic resilience plan. These two foundational elements form the basis of the project in front of you. Within the building complex, the Great Hall itself has been determined to be a most vulnerable area seismically. While driven by a need to address seismic safety in Great Hall, we must highlight that architectural and cultural values have been paramount concerns in our project approach. Renewing the Great Hall is a significant challenge and achieving high performance on our project goals is an imperative and a deeply held responsibility. I would like to underscore the degree to which the full team, including our UBC stakeholder group and our dedicated consultant team has approached this project with great rigor and attention to detail. So with that, I would like to ask Nick, Nick Malkovich, our prime consultant lead to walk us through the scope of the project and the design strategy. The Museum of Anthropology initially dedicated to housing and education of the cultural heritage of the Pacific Northwest indigenous peoples has expanded and grown to being one of the international a great international educational institute. It is an internationally recognized work of architecture and has been awarded the Prix de Vain Siècle Award of 2011 as an exemplary work of architecture in Canada. UBC has designated the museum a heritage building and a statement of significance defines its heritage characteristics. The building and the landscape are a unified conception uh, where the, the process from the entry to the building is a path designed through the landscape in essence where the process from the beginning as if you're emerging from a forest across the beach to a, to a to the edge of the ocean, which is in the case of the museum uh, designated by the pond, or as it was uh, initially cast, it was called an inlet, which ties the building and the, and the landscape to the Salish Sea beyond. The upgrade work of our consulting team is guided by the significance of the architectural composition as outlined by the statement of significance and its place among the recognized works of Arthur Erickson. Also uh, guiding principles were the energy performance, uh, uh, but within the context outlined above. Uh, upgrade work includes a seismic upgrade of the Great Hall, replacement of acrylic skylights on the entire museum, vertical glazing in the Great Hall, electrical upgrades, fire suppression system upgrade. The seismic upgrade of the Great Hall went through an intense study to, of approaches to see what's the best way to handle the, the issues and the movement that was projected for the Great Hall. After all the studies, uh, it was decided that the best way to maintain the architectural integrity of the Great Hall was to rebuild it. The solution to achieve desired code requirements was to place the structure of the Great Hall on isolators located in a crawl space below the floor to dampen the effects of seismic forces, considerably assisting, especially with the vertical glass. Skylights. The vaulted single uh, glazed acrylic skylights are to be replaced with twin sealed glass units of the same profile and lens uh, sizes. It also was uh, studied for uh, light transmission and uh, ambience of the room. The vertical glazing of the Great Hall, the, the vertical single glassed, single glazed tempered glass, which is suspended from the concrete structures, impacted by the movements of the structure. 
during a seismic event. It will be replaced with identical size single laminated glass lights. The connector fittings will be of bronze arranged as uh, existing. Lighting, the interior lighting of the exhibit uh, ramps as, towards uh, entry towards the Great Hall will be replaced with, and in the Great Hall, will be replaced with energy efficient LED lighting fixtures. Fire suppression, the fire suppression system will be upgraded and will include early detection abilities, which can be acted on by, uh, before, before the listed fire departments uh, get to the building. Landscape, the fronting, Landscape fronting the building of the, to the west will be dis, uh, disrupted during the construction of the building. Artifacts within the landscape will be removed or protected along with the shell and rocky beaches. It will be reconstructed to its original conceptual configuration with restoration of the planting materials. Uh, Anne and uh, Jean Grohal are project architect and uh, Beryl Allen, our landscape architect, and Daniel Do Doek of uh, Equilibrium Consulting, our structural engineer, are on hand to answer any questions. Right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm part of the structural engineering team with I Equilibrium Consulting. And we've been working on this exciting project for about three years. So the Northwest Pacific is one of the most seism seismically active regions worldwide, with three tectonic plates joining just off the coast of Vancouver Island. The gradual movement of these plates means that there are various types of earthquake that are possible at our site. In the, in the early 1970s, when the building was originally designed, much less was known about seismic design of buildings, and therefore the Great Hall was built with considerably less structural reinforcement than would be required today. Traditional ways of strengthening the structure would be to add stiff elements to take the seismic loads. These would be like diagonal steel braces or reinforced concrete shear walls. However, these were judged to significantly detract from the architectural beauty of the hall. The main structural challenge was to find a way to achieve the existing building form of the Great Hall while upgrading the hall to meet today's building code requirements. Base isolation was proposed at an early stage as a possible way to achieve this. Although it's becoming increasingly common in other parts of the world, as far as we know, this will be the second base isolated building in Canada and the first ever use of base isolation for a new building in Canada. So from a technical standpoint, it's been extremely exciting to work on. Base isolation works by decoupling the building from the ground by introducing isolation bearings between the foundations and the building above. The isolation bearings are able to deform and dissipate energy, allowing the isolated building to move independently from the ground and at much lower frequencies. This slower building movement significantly reduces the seismic loads, and with lower seismic loads, the new superstructure can take the exact same form as the original, avoiding the need for additional braces. Even with base isolation of the structure, we will need to have much, a much stronger structure than the original. This is done by increasing the strength of concrete and by using more non-visible reinforcement within the large concrete elements. Right, so I'll quickly run you through the proposed uh, sequence of construction for the structural elements. Um, the first step is to carefully remove the existing great hall down to grade. The ground will then be lowered by approximately 10 feet with a retaining wall to the perimeter to create a new crawl space below ground. New foundations and seismic isolators can then be installed below grade. On top of this, there'll be a suspended concrete slab. The heavy mass of the slab just above the isolation interface helps with the seismic response of the building. We will then lift in new precast concrete columns and channel beams. Together with, an with the architects, an independent concrete consultant and the contractor, a lot of work is going into the specification for the concrete to make sure that it's a good match to the original. The channel beams, just like the original, will be precast in large segments and post tension together on site with long steel cables. The largest beam is about 180 foot long. We will then install the cast in place reinforced link beams between the channels. Once the structure becomes a two-way spanning system with the link beams and channels working together, 
we can then remove shoring and the glazing and architectural finishes can be completed. That's a brief overview of the structural design and the main structural challenges. I'll now pass over to Beryl, who will tell you a little bit more about the landscape design. I'm, my name is Beryl Allen. I'm the project landscape architect for this project, um, representing Atelier Anonymous. And it's a very interesting project for us, uh, working on an iconic landscape design like this. The, our role, as um, written in this uh, board, is to assist in the protection and restoration of site vegetation, topography, and site elements and materials. Um, what, we, what we're planning to do is to use principles of um, conservation to protect the landscape and in areas where it's impacted by construction activities to restore it to pre-existing conditions. Uh, as Nick described, this uh, the landscape is integral to the design of the entire building and site. And as such, we will be very careful in um, making sure that we um, have all the right information, um, take lots of photographs, document existing conditions, look at old drawings, um, and make sure that during this restoration process, we will be able to um, rehabilitate um, the landscape to the iconic landscape design that was intended. <laughs> 